So today, mainly I'm going to cover the topic attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and I'll be covering mostly the aspects of psychosocial interventions rather than just uh, pharmacotherapy. I'll give, I will give you an understanding of what this disorder is. Then I'll give you, uh, so I'll give you a definition of the illness. I'll, I'll explain to you the causes of the illness. I'll give you the diagnostic criteria, how to understand what is uh, ADHD. I'll tell you about some of the scales. I'll cover pharmacotherapy and psychosocial interventions. I have uh, structured this in such a way that uh, mostly this is for MBBS students and a few points I'll be including even for the general public so that the viewers of the YouTube channel also can understand what is ADHD. That's okay. For the MBBS students, I'm going to give you first a sample question. So see this, this is a, um, a repetition of uh, previous entrance exam question. A nine-year-old child comes to you with the um, nine-year-old child has uh, disturbing uh, complaints of uh, disturbing people. He is destructive. He interferes when two people are talking, does not follow instructions and cannot wait for his turn uh, while playing a game. And he is likely to be suffering from. This is a past uh, entrance question. Now, if you read the first part of the question, you can see that nine-year-old child disturbs other people. So it just looks like a behavior disturbance. Most of uh, you MBBS students will go wrong here and you will just uh, take this question for a behavioral problem and mark the B option. But the later part of the question says that when two, he interferes when two people are talking, does not follow instructions and cannot wait for his turn while playing a game. The catch of the question here is about cannot wait for his turn while playing a game. This points mainly towards the option D, that is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I'll explain you what is this disorder per se right now. Now coming to the illness of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It is one of the very important neurodevelopmental disorders of childhood. There are many neurodevelopmental disorders. The commonly seen in the child psychiatry are intellectual disability or mental retardation. Then comes autism. Okay. And the third important type which we see is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, the topic for today. You know, the other two are MR and autism. Neurodevelopmental disorder of childhood, this point to remember because sometimes they mislead you by using this term. ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder. The worldwide prevalence of ADHD in children or adolescents is about 5.29%. Normally, um, in some studies, it has been shown that it, the, it ranges from 5 to 7%, but the standard textbook uh, kaplan sadok says that the worldwide prevalence is about 5.29% in the general population. ADHD is commonly seen higher in males and in younger children. Uh, adult also sometimes ADHD is seen, but the symptoms are not very prominent. Hyperactivity is less and more of inattentive symptoms is seen. Going to the history. ADHD first was described by a person called George Still in 1902. Remember this name, George Still. He described it first in 1902. He described children who were having restlessness, impulsiveness and inattentiveness with intense affective responses and conduct problems as having the condition called ADHD. This is how he described the condition called ADHD. In the past, there are also uh, terms like uh, minimal brain damage syndrome. It was one of the alternative terms which, were, which was used for this condition. During 1900 influenza pandemic, the children were having some of the hyperactivity issues after undergoing an influenza um, epidemic. So these children having hyperactivity were, then were called minimal brain damage syndrome. But they, those children actually didn't have any uh, real brain damage. In the early 1960s, what happened was this term was changed to minimal brain dysfunction. So these two are the old terms of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, Main, minimal brain damage syndrome and minimal brain dysfunction. Later, what happened around 1980s, uh, the ICD renamed the term minimal brain dysfunction and coined the term called attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. What are the causes for hyperactivity ADHD? Commonly, the functional and anatomical dysfunction in the brain's cortico-basal ganglio-thalamocortical circuit is seen in this condition. This is the brain dysfunction. There are multiple causes. Exact cause to pinpoint is very difficult and not even properly uh, explained. 
but commonly seen functional and anatomical dysfunction is in cortico basal ganglioteloma cortical circuitry if you do the mri scans of the adst children you can see global reductions in gray matter volumes especially the right lentiform nucleus and caudate nucleus with slightly larger gray matter volumes in the left posterior cingulate cortex this is the uh, brain dysfunction seen and it is also found that if you treat the patients with uh, amphetamines or methylphenidate for the adst the changes in these brain areas are also observed for the general public i would say see in utero risk factors for the adst see when the baby is in the uh, mother's uh, uterus or stomach you can see that there will be prenatal exposure to alcohol nicotine recreational drugs glucocorticoids and some of the toxins like hexachlorobenzene and polychlorinated bi biphenyls poor maternal diet and maternal stress during pregnancy have been predisposed to develop adst so if during if the inetro exposure happens to the mother to all these conditions then there is a possible risk perinatal adst risks also include prematurity low birth weight and obstetric complications high blood lead levels have also been linked to adst diagnosis however this is not a major risk factor now coming to the main symptom dimensions adst consists of mainly three symptoms inattention hyperactivity and impulsivity usually this hyperactivity and impulsivity are considered together so mainly we have inattention and hyperactivity symptoms inattention symptoms include these things see i'll tell you the list of symptoms now the child fails to give close attention to details or makes careless mistakes in school work work etc he has difficulty sustaining attention does not listen to when spoken to directly does not follow through any instructions and fails to finish the school works on time difficulty organizing tasks and activities avoids tasks requiring sustained mental effort loses things ne uh, necessarily for uh, unnecessarily for task easily uh, distracted by extraneous stimuli and forgetful in daily activities these are the inattentive symptoms and among these symptoms at least six should be present to call the child as having inattentive symptom so usually you can see that these children have difficulty in concentrating on the uh, task cannot pro provide proper attention in the activities and even when the child is performing some task if you speak to them they will get easily distracted and move away to other activities they in the classrooms also when the, the child is provided with some instructions child has difficulty in concentrating and following the instruction given by the teachers if the tasks are given to the children they have difficulty in organizing these tasks and uh, uh, doing it properly so what child does is usually if the task risk requires lot of mental effort child starts avoiding these things he also uh, loses lot of the things in the classes something like the child goes to school comes back only with the uh, books or a bag and lot of his pencil eraser everything will be lost so he usually loses lot of objects because of inattentiveness and he gets easily distracted to other things and he has lot of forgetfulness in daily activities now coming to hyperactivity and impulsivity set of symptoms the child has difficulty playing or engaging in activities quietly he always he is always on the go as if driven by a motor the, the, the child with the adst will be moving around like a motor or a toy he talks excessively blurts out answers sometimes before even the question is asked he has difficulty waiting in line or waiting in turn interrupts or intrudes on others so if two people are talking he will come in between and intrudes in between them he runs about or climbs inappropriately the child will usually be um, jumping over the table jumping over the chair if you go to the classroom the child will be walking around in the class even when the classes are going on this is what happened and the child is fidgety with hands squirms in the chair or moves around can't sit um, in one location moves or moving around his body all these kind of activities he will be doing leave seat in classroom or in other situations in which seating is, is remain to be expected so in the classroom if the teacher has uh, some 50 60 students this one there will be one child with adst who will be not having difficulty sitting in the place and he will be moving around in the room this is what happens so usually the child with hyperactivity cannot play quietly 
the team work is not possible if there is a team of cricket uh, players and a 10 students are playing this uh, child with hyperactivity has a difficulty organizing and playing with the team so child will be usually left out and stay plays alone and he'll be moving around like a motor this is what happens if at least six of these symptoms are present then child may be considered to have hyperactivity and impulsivity issues main five di the diagnostic criteria i have already told the important points are the onset of all the above symptoms should happen before 12 years of age that is very important if after 12 years it is usually put into adult adhd criteria but uh, usually before 12 years the onset of symptoms should be there to call as call it as a childhood adhd case duration should be of greater than 6 months it, it should not be a very short term diagnostic criteria child having all the symptoms for 2 months does not fulfill the criteria of adhd it should be present for greater than 6 months the children must have at least 6 symptoms from the list while older adolescents and adults we can take at least 5 symptoms into consideration several symptoms must be present in two or more settings and interfere with functioning of the child another mental disorder such as depression does not be does not account for the above five symptoms so most important is to rule out the present of presence of other psychiatric diagnosis before diagnosing adhd other symptoms should not should not be there now hyperactivity in normal task so this is one common uh, problem that happens because the mother will come to your uh, hospital and say that he has difficulty in sitting in classroom sir he has difficulty in listening to the class but when he is playing video game he is okay so this is one complaint so remember hyperactivity may be absent in normal situations or when child is engaged in activity they find particularly amusing or engrossing so if the child is very very interested to do some activity and if it is so much happiness promoting the child may not have all these symptom in certain settings but important life settings of the child like school home the classical symptoms will be floridly present next next is something called sluggish cognitive tempo it is a type of attention deficit deficit in children how do these children present they will these child uh, these children are brought to your hospital with complaints of daydream the mother or uh, the parent will come and tell you that sir that my child is found to be daydreaming most of the time just staring somewhere he will be confused mental fogginess all these cluster of symptoms are present which is called sluggish cognitive tempo this can also be a part of inattentive subtype of adhd next coming to scales how do you make the diagnosis we make the diagnosis of adhd using certain scales so these are the scales remember these are also entrance question for mbbs students corners rating scale for parent and teachers corners wells adolescents self report scale vanderbilt adhd diagnostic parent and teacher scales swanson nolan and pellan scale brown add rating uh, scale for children these are some of the scales which we use during the uh, diag making the diagnosis of adhd these are all entrance question remember mbbs students now let's go directly to the pharmacotherapy or treatment okay in treatment we have pharmacotherapy psychological counseling and psychosocial intervention for the children since this is since it is a neurodevelopment disorder and um, so the parents usually go for psychosocial intervention of treatment for this condition but if the symptoms are very severe and the child has difficulty managing himself in the classroom then you should go for pharmacotherapy also how do you do pharmacotherapy it consists of two class of drugs groups basically one is stimulants and another is non stimulants stimulants consists of methylphenidate dexmethylphenidate this is usually considered according to studies to be the first line agent for treatment of adhd symptoms next coming to non stimulant group of medication we have atomoxetine and clonidine atomoxetine is a norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor i'll explain to you later so these are the two groups of medication now first coming to stimulants stimulants basically we have two drugs already i told you stimulants increase the concentration of dopamine and norepinephrine in synaptic clefts within the brain in certain areas of the brain it will act methylphenidate acts as dopamine norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor remember this is also an entrance question what is methylphenidate Me the mechanism of action of methylphenidate is 
something like this the question will come serotonin reuptake inhibitor dopamine something like that so methyl phenidate here is a dopamine nor epinephrine reuptake inhibitor stimulants have been shown to improve vigilance and reaction time reduce variability of symptoms short term memory learning of verbal non verbal material and many many symptoms of adhd so overall uh, stimulants give fantastic uh, improvement in case of adhd symptoms the treatment is done something like this methylphenidate short acting uh, drugs are given like uh, 5 mg 10 mg 20 mg tablets are available in the market uh, 5 mg bd or 10 mg tid something like this we give uh, the medications most important it is a, a control drug so it will be ex uh, exclusively given in the uh, pharma, uh, pharma uh, what the pharmacy shops only with the two or three prescriptions because the extra prescriptions have to be sent back to the uh, government and the side effects are decreased sleep and reduced appetite remember the one of the problem with methylphenidate is it decreases sleep so mostly you have to give the medications during the day time not during the night time and it also reduces appetite so in children weight monitoring is absolutely essential when you are treating the child with stimulants okay next coming to the other drug atomoxetin atomoxetin first line uh, in individuals when parents have personal objection with stimulants usually both the drugs are equally used i would say but uh, there will be some of the parents who say that we will not go for methylphenidate or uh, stimulant type of uh, drugs in children then atomoxetin is used as first line it is a selective norepinephrine uh, uh, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor what happens is Uh, uh it basically acts on the brain and reduces these hyperactivity and impulsivity symptoms atomoxetin is available in the form of capsules and few are available even as tablets available in 10 mg 18 mg 25 mg and varied doses and it also gives fantastic uh, control of symptoms in adhd now we'll come to the psychosocial treatment this is mainly this part of it i mainly uh, prepared for students as well as the general public because this is the problem which we mainly encounter in the society because the management of g children in the society is a, a big problem for the parents as well as the teachers so psychosocial intervention in involves psychoeducation academic organization skill teaching and remediation parent training about adhd behavior modification social skills training and individual therapy Okay. some of the evidence based psychological treatments this i already have told you psychosocial now psychological treatment involves cbt adhd coaching dialectical behavior therapy mindfulness couples therapy for the parents of the adhd children all these things are offered by the psychologist now let's see the principles of behavior intervention now how do we begin uh, begin this uh, counseling if a parent uh, set parent comes with an adhd child begin with psycho education about the course uh, risk factors and long term outcome of adhd mostly the parents have to be educated that adhd is a neurodevelopmental long term problem and they have to understand that this problem is not uh, something like a cough or fever sustaining staying for just 5 to 10 days it is a long term issue and uh, neurodevelopmental in nature hence it it needs a long term care and uh, management parents are encouraged to attend more carefully to their child's behavior particularly when the child complies so more important is the uh, to for the parents to have a constant observation of the child's behavior make note of all the positive negative behaviors that is there in the child and that has to be individually attended to parents are trained to use time out effectively see sometimes the child will comply with your orders and there are instances when the child may not may not comply with your orders too so the parents are trained to use time out when the child does mistakes the th child has to be ordered to go for a time out what is time out here the child is usually placed in a uh, safe location alone and not allowed to do involve in the ch uh, in the child's uh, activity of choice so something like it is a kind of uh, um, placing the child in the closed safe location instead of allowing him to go for whatever he wants so you can ask the child to wait for certain duration of time calm himself down and go for the activities if he complies so then the parents are instructed in establishing a contingency management or token economy system at home in token economy system what we do is child is offered with rewards something like a chocolate 
an ice cream or something uh, or any uh, pleasurable object for, of the child as a token for complying with the parents orders so you can make a star kind of arrangement in, on the wall where child is rewarded points something like one star two star three star for every good behavior if the uh, child with adhd complies with the parents orders then every time the child complies a point can be given to the child when certain set of point a uh, set number of points happen child can be offered a token economy something like a reward for his good behavior parents learn how to manage non compliant behaviors in public settings so parents also have to be taught uh, in order to, uh, how to manage these kind of uh, negative behaviors the child will be going and having these hyperactivity symptoms in the public places and even in the classrooms or even in public locations then the parents have to be taught how to manage these kind of behaviors during such settings finally advances in pro social behavior in school are supported by the use of daily report card instead of giving an uh, annual long term report card for the child with adhd they should be given short term reports because child usually prefers to be having less attention hence short term report short term daily report cards of the child will work more in case of adhd children the child here in adhd has to be trained with psycho education the child has to be trained with attentional strategies where it has to be taught how to manage this his attention in a better way time management techniques have to be stopped because the child will be going for an activity in turn getting distracted into multiple activities and in the end will not be able to manage his time to complete the defined required task problem solving strategies are taught to the child impulse control is taught addressing associated problems or behavior issues have to be done and positive psychology is done now coming to attention strategies here there are certain called internal set of strategies and external set of strategies in internal set of strategies we have something called goal setting the child is asked to ma maintain a diary certain set uh, certain goals or the um, tasks that has to be completed cognitive challenges have to be um, given to the child in order to improve improve his cognitive skills maximization of novelty so you have to uh, ask the child to go, not go for just a novel task every time and instead uh, this maximization of novelty has to be done repetition and rehearsal uh, of the activities has to be done spaced retrieval create a visual cue visual cue means you have to ask the child to visualize the activity before going for it mnemonics can help in maintaining the uh, set of activities child has to keep calm relaxed and maintain physiological arousal these are the internal strategies that has to be done next external strat strategies are minimizing distraction the child will be often getting distract to lot of uh, unnecessary activities when performing a task that has to be minimized cue cards will help uh portable recorders can be given to the child these are done in western countries where the child will be often getting distracted and hence this portable recorders will help them guide in their tasks answer phone messages can be used lists are given to go for uh, go in the order of the tasks help cards can help watches or clocks are given for time management alarms are given also for time management and personal uh, organizers or cell phones are also given next impulsivity to control we ask the child to go for double check techniques so when the child is going for a task the child has to question itself is this what i really want to happen for how long have i wanted to do this work what will happen if i do this what will happen if i don't do this so by doing this kind of double check techniques uh, by questioning himself the child can be uh really careful in avoiding distractions and going for proper tasks he has to identify triggers and vulnerabilities within within himself and self instructional training can be given to the child in terms of time management so the child has to be uh, explained about reconceptualizing time as a resource so time is a type of resource and it is available in limited quantity that the child has to understand child has to be Uh, trained in activity planning prioritizing and rewards so the, if there is a reward child has to to and uh, know exactly when the reward has to be taken 
time management of time management is also important for this uh, children with adhd and spotting time wasting traps so something like attention switching jumping from task to uh, task to task this is what happens in adhd children if they go for one task somewhere in the between they jump to another task and they land up somewhere in the end the task won't be completed any time soon so the child has to be explained about attention switching that is happening within him and to uh, not go for time wasting traps delay aversion that is opting for immediate gratification the unique uh, behavior of the adhd children is they usually go for short term smaller rewards rather than long term bigger rewards so if you go for a, a children a child with adhd and ask him uh, do you want a chocolate now or ice cream after half an hour he will go for chocolate right now this is what happens so this is called delay aversion that is they are opting for immediate short term gratification rather than bigger gratifications so this is uh, what is to be taught in time management to go for better things procrastination that is there's always tomorrow and uh, there's always tomorrow where the child will be always thinking that uh, um, uh, let me go for uh, uh, let me finish my task tomorrow than com uh, complete it to get today this is what happens usually these adhd children's uh, postpone their activities in the end never complete it next is false busyness in false busyness what happens is um the child will be busy in various activities but in the end never complete it see if your child is given a homework to be completed at home what happens is child will keep on writing something in the end the homework won't be co complete so this is being busy achieving nothing this is what happens in um, adhd next is managing frustration and anger what uh, what is happening here is we have to help uh, help the child recognize potential situations and triggers for example low threshold for irritability and boredom frustrated by attentional difficulties lack of achievement and failure to finish tasks has to be informed high emotional arousal uh, is distracting but also stimulating anger as an avoidance mechanism uh, that has to be informed feeling of anger towards psychiatric services has to be managed because the child is coming to you for a uh, treatment so what uh, this these uh, issues usually come in adult adhd or once the child has uh, crossed a certain age something like uh, the child easily gets irritable because this is a very tedious uh, process of going for counseling so child has to be uh, trained in order to manage his anger irritability issues attention difficulties maintain his cool uh temper and go for a proper uh, psychiatric management children with adhd also have anxiety issues which has to be explored properly so children with the uh, children and even adults with uh, adhd we have to help them recognize fear of failure or anti anticipatory anxiety because of constantly having this hyperactivity impulsivity issues and multiple mistakes they usually start having fear that they might do wrong things so we have to train them in order to manage their manage their anxiety issues there is marked self consciousness within them that uh, i am having hyperactivity uh, issues etc which has to be trained and taught to them concerns about competence and performance anxiety is always there over focusing and Uh, and the perseverative behavior will be there their child will be repeating tasks it has to be taught next uh, how anxiety exacerbate attentional difficulties has to be taught to the low mood and depression something like helping to recognize precipitating and maintaining factors such has to be taught adverse events in the childhood has to be addressed into child will be usually criticized as being lazy stupid etc and these things have to be addressed lack of supportive relationships will be there which has to be seen low self esteem through not achieving potentials failure to finish tasks mood regulation difficulty low mood etc has to be seen so our task is if there is a child with adhd he should not be criticized as being lazy stupid etc instead see to it that he get lo a lot of family support from the parents as well as teachers and if there is low self esteem lack of friends it has to be addressed 
let's see into the positive side of ADHD. What happens is usually negative side alone will be looked into. We should explain the positive side to the girl. See, the child will be all, always called as being distractible. What you can say is he is constantly monitoring the environment. Attention span is short but can become intensely focused for long periods of time. But we can look into the positive side of it. That is, he is able to throw themselves um, into chase of the moment's notice. There is also a, a title called poor planner for the ADHD. We can say it is instead, it can be instead called as flexible. Child with the ADHD is called disorganized. Rather than disorganized, we can call him as ready to change uh, the strategy quickly. There is a distorted sense of time in the ADHD. Actually, we can call it as a child with tirelessness. Child is said to be unaware of how long it will take to do something. Instead, capable of sustained drives, but only when hot on the ray of some good. So, we can also, the child also is said to be impulsive, but we can say result oriented. Impatient, we can call acutely aware of whether the goal is getting closer. Has difficulty following instructions, but actually the child is independent in nature. Acts without considering consequences, but he is willing and able to take chance. So, look into only the positive side rather than looking into the negative side of the child. This is what is always needed uh, uh, in the perspective of teacher, parent, as well as the counselor of the child. So, coming to the end, I have mostly explained you about what is ADHD, the symptom clusters of ADHD, treatment of ADHD, and mainly concentrated on the psychosocial aspect of treatment. So it is unfortunate to see that children with ADHD are called something like bad, stupid, dumb, lazy, etc. Instead, we observe them to be daydreaming and look uh, and uh, working on tirelessly. So kindly don't consider these children as bad. What is properly needed is take them to a proper counselor, doctor, or a psychologist. Get the condition identified, treated. Basically, the child is not bad. The child is just having a condition called ADHD, which is treatable. And the child can go for counseling and have a proper management and treatment. Okay. Thank you, students. If you have any questions, I'll go for it. Kindly post it. Okay.